Welcome to the Cute Jeweler channel. Are you interested in getting into resin 3D printing, but don't have the money to shell out for one of these really expensive machines? I purchased an Anycubic Photon Printer that retails for $500. Right now it's on sale and I got it for $260. For that price, I could get into the resin 3D printing and not have to go out and spend $5,000 or even $10,000 on a machine. In this video, we're gonna go from what's in the box all the way through to getting your first 3D print off the printer. So let's go. My Anycubic finally arrived. So let's go through what was in the box and let's put it together and get our first print going. First, we have our instruction manual. This is gonna have our checklist of what was in the box. So let's go ahead and open to that page and go through it. First on the list is the 3D printer. So here it is. We'll go ahead and open it up and have a look. I love the colors on the inside. I think the blue just really pops and it's pretty cute. Next on our list is the build platform. So here it is, again, that really beautiful blue color. This is where the prints are actually going to adhere to as the 3D printer is working. Then we have our resin bat, which is still inside the printer. This is how it was shipped. I'm gonna leave it there for now because we're gonna take it out soon. Next on the list is our USB stick. This printer doesn't run off SD cards, it runs off of USB. So anytime you wanna print something, you load it onto the stick and then plug it into the printer and print from there. Next we have our vat of resin. On the list it says random color. I received green, which is actually the color I've seen most people getting. So I don't know how random their color selection really is. Next on the list is our mask. So resin printers do tend to let off vapors or fumes, which can be a little irritating. Every single unboxing I've seen of this printer, they've gone like this. So I feel like I need to as well. Next we have our gloves. It's really nice that they included these because resin printing is very, very messy. It's actually the biggest complaint I've heard about resin printers, but anytime you're dealing with a liquid, you're going to have a mess. So it's just inevitable. Now we have our funnels. I actually didn't know what these were when I first opened the box, but it makes sense that they would have these. These are pretty nice because they have the, the solid plastic and then the little bit of a mesh on here. You're going to have floaters in your resin. That's just what's going to happen. So this is really nice that they included this so you can kind of help filter through that resin and keep it nice and clean and keep floaters from ruining your prints. Now on the list we have our manual, but we already looked at that. I ordered my 3D printer with an extra film. The film is on the bottom of the vat. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but I ordered an extra one. The only assembly that this printer needs out of the box is the handle. So I've got my handle and a couple of extra screws. I don't know what all the other screws are for. I'm hoping I don't have to put anything else together. They might just be spares in case something breaks. They also included a tool kit, which is supposed to be all the tools you'll need to maintain your printer. So. It's got a couple of different types of Allen wrenches. This is actually an Allen wrench with a handle and also a flathead screwdriver. Next on our list is the scraper. This is to help you get those prints off of that build platform. We're almost done with our checklist. We have our power cord. Of course, you've got to have some kind of getting electricity to the printer. And then last on the list is a few extra screws. In the box, I also had this which I don't know what it says, because it's all in Chinese, and I unfortunately don't speak Chinese, and my after sales service card. So this has on the back, it's got a couple of different QR codes that I can scan to get extra help on the printer. Okay, so let's do the one bit of assembly that you have to do for this, which is attach the handle. So it's already got a pre-drilled hole. Assembly complete. I've plugged in the printer and now we can go ahead and turn it on. Now I'm just going to remove the vent so we can take a closer look at it. Just going to unscrew these, slide this out and let's see what we have here. So this is the vat. It's got the plastic film on the bottom. This will allow the light to come through and cure the resin because with the DLP printers, it's gonna cure the resin from the bottom. It's not like the FFF printers that are kind of gonna be extruding the material from the top. So I'll make sure it's nice and clean. So I have a little wipe here. Just make sure 
remove all the dust. It's very staticky. Okay, so I'll just place this to the side. I'm also going to check the LCD screen in here and make sure it's free of dust. Now let's go ahead and home the z-axis. Start by clicking on the tools button. From here, we need to click the move the z-axis button. And now we can click the home button. So next we need to level our platform. It's very important that you don't skip this step. The platform needs to be level to the printer. Otherwise, the first layer won't adhere. Or even worse, if it's at an angle, it could go too low and it could crack the LCD screen, in which case your entire printer is useless. So it's very, very important that you don't skip this step. There's a screw inside here that's keeping this build platform flat. So you need to loosen that, that way it's got a little bit of give. Now that I've loosened that screw, see how this platform has movement to it? This is gonna be how we're gonna level everything. There's a screw here that helps to hold the build platform to the printer, so I'm just gonna loosen that up to make sure I can slide it on. There we go, just making sure it's not in this little square anymore. And I can go ahead and slide this on. Go ahead and tighten that. It's important that you make sure to tighten this screw down because you want it to be the same tension it's going to be during printing. You don't want this to be loose because then anything you do to set this build platform is gonna have to be redone every single time. Now the instructions call for us to grab a piece of paper and use it for the leveling process. I have paper right here. We take the piece of paper and slide it underneath the build platform. Now it's time to level our build platform. So under here, let's just lift the paper a little bit. You can see that there are buttons that have measurements on them. The first one is 10 millimeters, the second one is one millimeters, and the third one is 0.1 millimeters. Now these are gonna be how you're going to move your platform in the Z axis. What we wanna do is move the platform up and down until we have some tension on here. So I'll go ahead and just start moving my platform up and down until I get the right tension. That feels pretty perfect. So now I need to hold the platform and tighten the screw. I want to make sure everything is straight in the front. Now we just tighten the screw. Now that we've finished leveling our platform, we need to tell the machine that this is now level and this is where we want our Z to be. So I just need to come here and go back and hit the Z equals zero button. This is different from the home button. This will tell the printer that this is the zero setting. I just get a little warning that this is resetting what my zero is, which is what I want to do. So I'll go ahead and hit confirm. Now that our platform is level, we're ready to start our first print. Overall, this printer was actually pretty easy to use. The detail on here is pretty good. I was surprised at how well it did. And as far as resin 3D printers go, that's actually on par with what I expected. Of course, this printer is a little bit messy, but that's to be expected from any resin 3D printer. The support software that comes with this printer is not the most user-friendly. So I'm gonna make a video kind of walking you through that process. Now, is this gonna be good enough for my jewelry projects? I'm gonna be doing a little bit more research on that and I'll cover that in another video. Are you interested in getting tips and tricks on how to 3D model your projects? Check out my Twitch channel. I stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Interested in seeing what projects I'm working on? Follow me on my social medias to see what projects I'm working on and get more tips and tricks on 3D printing. Thanks for watching my video about the Anycubic Photon 3D printer. I hope you found this helpful and were able to get your printer set up. On my channel, I post videos on 3D printing and also CAD modeling, as well as casting and jewelry making. So if you find any of that interesting, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check the little bell and make sure that you get notified when my videos go up. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.